Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 show. Today, I have a special guest, and we are talking about your safe word for simplicity in business. So I'm your host, Nicole Simonin, and I help women over 40 squash the dieters mentality and lose weight for the last time. So if you're a regular to the show, then you know what is going on. And if you're new, welcome, welcome. Each week on the Shape It Up show, on Tuesdays, I come to you with my topics on fitness, nutrition, and mindset. And then on Thursdays, I bring on a special guest who complements the other aspects of your life. So what um, if you want to get more information or more help to work with me, I want to invite you to schedule a discovery call at shapeitupfitness.com slash call. And we are going to dive into our special guest today and her topic. So my special guest today lives in the cozy mountain town of Nelson, British Columbia with her mountain loving man, their teen son and daughter, and their two mini dosh hounds. I can never say that word right. So hopefully I did. She is obsessed with Game of Thrones, triple shot lattes, working on Jason puzzles while listening to Game of Thrones podcast and drinking lattes. <laughs> While she isn't busy doing all that, she is a business mentor for moms who are coaches. She helps her clients get clarity on their niche or niche, whichever way you want to call it, their signature offer and simple marketing plan to follow that attracts consistent dream clients. Her superpowers include sniffing out overcomplicated so you can build the business of your dreams with ease, self-confidence, and loads of downtime to connect with your loved ones and yourself and apparently to watch lots of great games of thrones <laughs> and drink coffee. <laughs> so welcome Kathy Stolwell to the show. I'm so excited to have you here today. Thanks for having me, Nicole. And yes, you pronounce it Dachshund. Dachshund. Yes, because so when I was researching the breed, I got um, Dachshund for dummies and that was the first lesson how to pronounce it. So it's Dachshund. <laughs> <Terrible. laughs> what did I say? Dachshund probably. That's okay, it's yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. We'll let it potato, slide. potato, you know, <laughs> exactly. the wiener dog, dog wiener right? dog. <laughs> <laughs> so Kathy, welcome to the show. And um, I wanted to dive in and just tell everybody a little bit about you and how you got started doing what you're doing. Sure. Um, so I'm essentially a business coach for moms who coach moms. And how I got started doing that is from doing what I call following the bliss crumbs. So it all essentially want to go way back my path started when I became pregnant for the first time and I was experiencing these crazy cravings that made no sense. Cravings for food, like wanting to eat 12 corn on the cobs a day <laughs> to like repulsions, repulsions to stuff in my environment. And I noticing there was a theme. I just wanted everything around me simplified. I had this really strong instinct kicked in. And what really blew my mind is when I later learned that corn on the cob has a high amount of lactic acid. Is that correct? I think that's what you need, not lactic acid. That's what you get when you work out too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a vitamin you're supposed to eat a lot. It's escaping my mind right now. Citric but acid? I vitamin C folic folic acid. Folic acid. Yes. Folic acid. Need that yes. Pregnancy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because <laughs> I started taking the prenatal vitamins and I just couldn't do it. it. Made me nauseous, so I got off them. But then I was like, "Corn of the cob," and <laughs> so, so I went crazy. So I find out corn of the cob has a high amount of folic acid, and um, yeah, it blew my mind how becoming pregnant. I felt more dialed into my own inner knowing, and I also felt more dialed into that mama bear energy of expressing of like, "No, no, thank you. I don't want this." Well-meaning family members gifting us, et cetera, et cetera. So that was the genesis of me being like, hmm, following my cravings leads me to goodness. And then what led me to coaching eventually um, was starting a blog as the original purpose was to document our foray into starting up a hobby farm. And it turned again into sharing my bliss online. And then I started attracting moms who had similar um, bliss palette as me and I started just having making fun connections online and I was like well we live in the middle of nowhere now what am I going to do to make money and so I started exploring different ways to monetize my love of 
sharing what turns me on essentially and getting conversations rocking and rolling and I tried a whole bunch of different things, namely an Etsy shop because I was hyper crafty at the time, and then starting a online sewing program, an e-course, and that was getting closer because then I started seeing these moms. The whole um, premise of the the e-course was how to how to sew with little rugrats around. So essentially releasing perfection, noticing how little chunks of time add up so they can create a project that's really excites your soul. And then I'm like, ooh, now I'm on to something. So that inspired me to become first um, a simplicity parenting coach because I noticed too, simpl simplifying brings you that space and those boundaries um, to make time for yourself and also a creativity coach which addresses those areas of resistance i.e the perfectionist piece and like i was saying small bite size action can get you closer to your goals and i smush those two core philosophies together to create what i call mama bliss coaching and then that led to teaching moms how to coach in this style which then led to me becoming a business coach for moms who coach moms so they can get clients and we could spread that bliss wave across the world. That's awesome. I love that your focus is on simplicity because I know, I mean, I've been in the business since 2006 doing personal training and fitness and nutrition. And I feel like halfway through, you know, I went through my own personal journey, but there's something about like just making it so easy because like the weight loss industry makes it so complicated. Yeah. Like you have to follow the diet. Exactly. You have to do this workout precisely this way. And, um, yeah. So my business too is like, is shifting to like, how simple can I make it? How easy yes. can I make it? Mm -hmm. so I love that you bring that to people. And, um, also just like what you're saying, what did you call it? The bliss wave? Um, you call it? The, the bliss crumbs lead to a bliss wave. Yeah. The bliss I wave's mean, a new thing. I just came out of my mouth. You're, you're... <laughs> so, well, I'll add that to the dictionary. I'll trademark that. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. But like, I know like just the ripple effect of like, yeah. um, anybody who is a coach or anybody who has an impact on anybody's life, you know, once I was actually thinking about this today with my clients in the sense of like, when they lose weight, they don't just lose weight for them, but they're making an impact on those kids that they have, the grandkids, you know, and so forth. And it trickles down the line. And it's the same thing, you know, I would imagine for your business in the sense of like, you know, when, when kids see mom doing something that she loves and is successful at it, it, it mm -hmm. goes down the line. It makes that oh, next yeah. generation. Kids are so sensitive. A quick story, when my daughter was born, it took my mom a few weeks to come out here to meet her. And at that point, she was must have been about like, I guess, four weeks old at the time. And I was kind of freaking out a little bit because she wouldn't go to sleep. Every time it was time for bed, she'd be crying, crying, crying. And then my mom would just grab her and she would just settle. And I'm like, tell me your secret. <laughs> Baby she whisperer. said to me, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like the exactly baby whisperer, which comes from the term, the horse whisperer, right? That's mm -hmm. where it originated. And she said to me, my mom's from Peru. And she's like, babies are like horses. They could smell your fear. And I'm like, oh, so that was the flip side is true. Children are like horses. They could smell your bliss. They pick up, mm. they're like, the canary in the coal mine in the house so absolutely i love thinking how the me pursuing the work i do is modeling to my kids especially my daughter is like anything's possible and i actually have my mom to thank for that she followed her bliss while growing up too she worked from home as a seamstress and that was just such a great vibe in the house she would <laughs> She would either sew while listening to Simon and Garfunkel or watching soap operas. And she would just <laughs> let me and my little brother hang out and do whatever we want. We would take off and go on picnics together. We would play in the rumpus room. And so I really feel that she modeled to me. It's like, yeah, like just go with the flow. Let the kids like amuse themselves. And yeah, it's more mom centric approach because yeah, if mom's blissed out, everyone's blissed out. Yeah. What is that saying? Happy wife, happy life. Yes. Yes. <laughs> happy yes, yes. Yeah. My mom um, growing up, 
uh, I don't know what year it was, but so I'm 48 and yeah. she is what, 30 years older than me. She went back to college at oh, nice. somewhere in her forties. Um, and back then that was not really common. Yeah. Like she was an Avon, um, seller, um, for, I, I don't know, I, you know, like when I look back, I'm like, I don't I have no clue how long it was. I just remember the little things that you could oh, rub I and love put on. The yeah. Avon lady catalog <laughs> at that age. Yes. I hear you. I remember yeah. those. But so she went back to college and, um, I know that was definitely an influence on me because yeah. what, I would have been 10, I guess at that time. Um, yeah. So what a gift. for all those ladies out there who are doing their own thing, doing their business and, you know, you may think you're not killing it, but you know, you've got somebody watching you, some little person that's like looking up to you and thinks you're phenomenal. So keep yeah. going. Yeah. So let's dive into the topic today. Mm -hmm. So your safe word for simplicity in business. Yes. Take it away. <laughs> all right. All right. So this is a great time of year um, to talk about this just because it's time of this recording. Um, to start a new year and like the big trend is like what's your word of the year what's your word of the year um so i've been just having so much fun with this because um recently i have discovered um human design so i'm actually in the throes of, the, of getting certified as an expert so i'm like halfway through the program so it's just been all encompassing and what i love seeing is how i mentioned the bliss crumbs so I started following the bliss crumbs, like same as you, 2006, essentially my path of where I've landed today in this regard. And um, I feel that even those bliss crumbs back then absolutely tie in with what I'm really passionate about today. So I always tell my clients is to like when you're making decisions in your business is to just go with that first gut instinct. You can always like course correct as you go. So kind of like how that word of the year sets the intention for the year. What I noticed the magic, and I'm just noticing lately because I chose a new word of the year, obviously for 2022, but I set the intention at the beginning of um, 2021 of the, my word of the year being fun. So, mm -hmm. you know, I made a big stink, fun's my word, fun's my word. What's your word of the year? Mine's fun, right? <laughs> and then I kind of forgot about it until I discovered human design. And according to my energy type, I'm supposed to follow the fun. And it could, was just- to interrupt, yeah. could you give a little description about what human design is? Cause- Yeah, for sure. Okay, so it's kind of like the science of your aura. It's like this new version of astrology. Okay. And it looks at where the stars and planets were aligned at the moment of your birth but also the moment where your soul drops into your body in utero. So six months in utero. So three months before you're supposed to be born. And this has been blowing my mind. And it's kind of funny because I live in the land of, you know, cool hippie chicks. Like all my girlfriends are like really <laughs> into astrology. And I used to tease them mostly because I didn't know what time I was born. So I didn't know what my moon rising. So I was a little jealous because I would ask my mom, like, what time was I born? And my mom would be like, I don't know. It was night. It was day. It was dark. I don't, I don't know. You know, so I was so frustrated. So I actually had, I finally found out because I was so intrigued by human design. So I had to write a letter to the hospital in Montreal. Oh, wow. Like, please tell me what time I was born. So you can go to this um, website called mybodygraph.com and for free plunk in the time of your birth where in the world um, and it's really it's really goosebump giving and it gives you a glimpse into how you best operate how you are naturally designed to operate based on what your energetic blueprint is so it's so revealing it touches upon your life purpose it goes really deep into how you digest like how you <laughs> If you go deep, deep, deep. But I'm, I went for it because I really want to apply this for my clients and helping them land on a niche that really aligns with how they're supposed to sign, um, show up. And how this is parallel with how I began my coaching approach is the simplicity piece almost. It's like it peels off the layers of 
conditioning and distractions, society, how you're told to kind of like, and, you know, and especially these days with our high paced society and, you know, our lifestyles right now, there's just busy, busy, we forget what that quiet center is. So when I began coaching, I call that quiet center mama bliss. And all the words I chose for my word of the year uh, is almost like little like um, sub words that hang off of the hum, uh, Mama Bliss umbrella. So fun. That speaks to my bliss. I had the word trust for a long time. And my word of the year once was release the fear or, you know, mm -hmm. grouping of words, right? <laughs> so they all kind of like simplicity was absolutely, I think that was a... Um, uh, for two years, I had simplicity, just words that remind me, I can always go back to my true nature, mama bliss, but that is open to interpretation. So you can choose. So because I train moms now how to coach other moms, and they have ideas for what they want to call their business. I'm like, absolutely. That was like, the umbrella for my business. That was the intention I laid out for what I promised my clients to get. Let's peel off those layers of distractions and get back into your own inner knowing. But really, mm -hmm. simplicity is the best way. It's just like, let's simplify everything so we can turn our eyes, gaze inward, and tap into our own inner knowing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I came up with a safe word. Um, what safe word really is, is an acronym for you to hit the pause button. And if you feel like it, you can actually utter out loud safe. <laughs> <laughs> you know how you have safe words when things get a little like much. <laughs> Pick a safe word. It could be avocado, whatever, but right. safe word is an acronym. So the s is stands for stuff do a check-in on the stuff on your plate mm -hmm. so in the context of your business is like checking in with do i have too many offers do i have offers that aren't really lighting me up or too much stuff in relation to how i run my business so a, a quick example of this is as a coach i take um you know, in a coaching session, I used to record the client calls, I would take, you know, these like really fastidious notes. Mm -hmm. And then after the call, I would send my client an email with like this novella of, you know, notes from our call. Yeah. And <laughs> here's where you could download your call recording. And then I'm like, how can I simplify this? So now it's the my client's responsibility to record their call. I give them permission through Zoom so they can house it. They could take their notes. And I, of course, I'll send them the links if one comes up. Oh, I'll, I'll take a note. I'll take like little mini notes for myself, but it's just, it's simplified my coaching sessions. And I picked up because after the call and be like, oh man, I still have to do that. And that takes like half an hour. Yeah. So it was a feeling of like, almost kind of like Ooh, dread. And that feeling might have been kind of subconsciously, you know, holding back clients because I'm just like subconscious. I'm like, oh, let me take on a client. That's yeah. going to be actually be two clients. So that's just an example of yeah. stuff. Yeah, I agree with that too. I used to do that for clients and um, I would send like the highlights of the, the call yeah. and same thing, the link here it is if you want to download it. And then I got to the point where I was like, it's, it's almost like you're spoon feeding yeah. And I think there's a place for that, but uh, like, I know when, when clients come to me, my goal, like a lot of people are like, I just need accountability. And yes, I think that's true, but I teach my clients how to be accountable to themselves. And one of it is you take your own notes. You get to decide what you want to take away from the mm -hmm. calls. I have clients who take, like you were saying, very, you know, detailed notes of each call. And then I have clients that just kind of leave the call with this like overall feeling, mm -hmm. you know, and so individual for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it totally works for whatever, but yeah, I definitely think simplifying your stuff. And I think that could be applied in so many areas in 
you know, my listeners lives, whether it be clutter, whether it be yeah. family, you know, or people who are negative or oh, yeah. talking bad. I mean, so you can apply that to any aspect Absolutely. of your life. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's like a manifestation 101 is clearing out old stuff to welcome in new energy, a new, to stuff, new yeah. blessings in yeah. your life. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Okay, so A in safe, that stands for activities. So it's like a kissing cousin to stuff, <laughs> really. Sorry, I used to have a friend who actually like kissed her cousin. But anyway, <laughs> I got married. Anyways, um, I digress. So it is paying attention to what lights you up. So that's why I love the word fun, especially again, I think this is why I'm so obsessed with fun these days is according to my own human design, I'm a generator. So we are one of the energy centers generators in the world. So we have to be very careful that we are not depleting our energy by people pleasing. We have a tendency to people, please. So one way to look at that, if you feel things are getting overcomplicated and you're shouting avocado or whatever word you choose, <laughs> is checking in, like take inventory of what are all the activities that make up my day, both in your personal life and your business. And just check in, is this really lighting me up? Is there a way I could maybe take this off my plate? Perhaps not forever, but here comes another bliss word, bliss chunk of time. I call bliss chunks a three month chunk of time. Um, also in my business, I'm huge on pregnancy and birthing analogies. It's like a trimester, just for this trimester, you know, I'm gonna lay off that second triple shot latte. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, just for now, I'm gonna take this or this and this off my plate. And then you can like reassess, was that really necessary? You know. Being a mom for me, what's a perfect example of this is volunteer expectations in my kids' class. My kid, mm. both of them went to the Waldorf school here in town. It's the private school and it has a reputation for like, you're signing yourself up for a lot of volunteer <laughs> hours, right? And I'm like, bring it on. This is like my dream come true. My kid's going to this school, but yeah, it's sneaky. It's sneaky. So what I have a deal with myself is at the beginning of the school year, I'm saying no, but come spring, I'm like, I've cleared off some energetic space for that. And that, for some reason, um, that bliss chunk of time, the springtime, I feel more, well, it's not like, you know, I live in a ski town. There's like a lot say, of snow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little easier for me to transport the kids to and fro, but just paying attention again to what really lights you up and seeing that as honoring those around you you're modeling, taking care of you. Um, you're not depleting yourself. You're not draining your adrenals. You are, you know, just inspiring them to, to do what lights them up and together we'll make a great team that way. Yeah. I think that's important just in general. Cause I feel like there's a lot of like, like, how do you want to live your life? Do you want to be running around like with the chicken that's heads cut off, you know, yes. just like a crazy person? Yep. Is that how you want to live your life? And I think I know for me when I, now my kids are teenagers now, but, um, when they were little, you know, I, I feel like, uh, as a new mom and I was an older new mom, like there's these expectations of like, yes, you have to make the cupcakes and you have to bring all the yes. stuff and you have to do all the things and you have to be with the kids and, and all that. And not that I didn't want to be with my kids, but you know, there is a level of balance of like, yep. and how do you want to really like, how do you want to go through life? Um, mm -hmm. and the same thing could be said on the other end, you know, for the people who I'm thinking of uh, weight loss wise, you know, do you want to sit on the couch all day and watch Netflix? Like what, what's your dry? Where do you want to like exit mm -hmm. this world? Like, what do you, this is kind of morbid, but like when the time comes, what do you, what's the mark you want to leave on the world? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. is it that I left a dent in the couch and I watched all the <laughs> Netflix shows that I possibly could? <laughs> and maybe that is, that's your yeah. call. But um, yeah, I think finding that balance of, you know, what you want, not what the expectations of anyone is. Which is great. Yep, exactly. Yep. Um, the F, the F word in flow is flow. <laughs> <laughs> word and say this. it's flow so like similar to what you were saying it's not like we could never 
sit on the couch and we have three wicked dents in our couch our two wiener dogs they got their own dents it's hilarious and i got <laughs> mine but anyways um it's not to say yeah like follow your bliss that's my bliss too but at the end of the day the kids go to bed and me and craig right now are on this dexter kick <laughs> so good and um but yeah it's just honoring what consistency looks like for you so in context again for your business consistency is important but you get to define what that looks like for you so some people it could be more of a rigid you know i'm following this daily routine and schedule and sometimes it's like no it, there needs to be some space there um for there to be you know uh, inspired by you know ooh, my intuition's leading me to work from this coffee shop today how interesting let's do that and then there's this really like cool encounter so just checking in like is my flow or consistency schedule is it feeling stifling or too airy fairy that i'm just kind of feeling like i'm flailing mm -hmm. so this too was greatly um um reintroduced to me with my human design because i always thought and my my friends tease me this um, I've, I'm such a stickler for routine. Like, uh, I'm so blessed that my best friend from high school lives close to here. We don't see each other often, but when we do, it's such a blessing. It's like we picked up like, like nothing. She knows me better than anyone in the world other than Craig. But we went for a walk and I'm like, oh, I got to get home. It's time to make supper. Like, I'm all about the early dinner so the mm. kids could go to bed early so we can mm -hmm. watch Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> And Game of Thrones. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my. We watch like, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty dark stuff, which is funny. But, anyways, um, she's like, oh, seriously? It's so early. Oh, I always thought that was just your shtick. And I'm like, oh, no, no. It's real. I need to, you know. But human design, reading my chart, I need some more flow in my consistency. So I am trying to challenge myself to kind of like, move out of it a little bit more um so i decided to take a dance class tuesdays mm -hmm. in the morning um they have since ceased but it was really fun i felt kind of like like hearkening back to my high school days you know like skipping <laughs> class or something and i'm like ooh, i'm yeah, really connected yeah. to cool kathy again. <laughs> I can so totally, yeah yeah i can totally relate to structure because like i yes you know, I grew up in the ballet world. So, and was a professional ballet dancer and structure oh, wow. is like, yes. Key. Um, and I even find, um, one of the coaches I work with, she's like, you just need to like, not have structure. I'm like, no, I, uh, I feel like I'm being thrown in the middle of the ocean without mm. structure. Um, mm -hmm. and especially like, as far as fitness wise, like I definitely do so much better when I wake up, I do my walk, I do my workout, mm. I do, you know, whatever it is that I have planned because by the end of the night, I'm like, you, um, especially cause it's winter. I'm like, <laughs> I literally was saying yesterday to my son and my husband, I was like, it's four 30. Is it too early to like shower and get in your pajamas? Yeah. <laughs> cause we watch TV too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I think that's also finding what your flow is yep. and, and figuring out what works for you. And there, yep. there are days where I don't have things structured. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, awareness is everything for sure. That's yeah. why I do not, I can't do anything after three o'clock in my business. Like Me things <laughs> shut down my brain just goes, <laughs> it just. And that's okay. Um, yeah. You know, the balance for me is cooking. I love cooking dinner and it's just like my downtime. The kids are in the kitchen and yeah, absolutely. So just having that awareness and knowing what types of activities to do when, um, and just, you know, um, honoring that. Like my mom, really fun mom, real more fun mom story. Growing up, she called me Simbrawensa, right? <laughs> and I always thought that meant, oh, Kathy, my little munchkin. Uh, 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 it means without shame. So, <laughs> <laughs> so now I just, oh my gosh, she's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> so she, um, I always kind of hear that in my head. Simbrawensa. It's just like without shame, doing what works for you, just having that self awareness and knowing as long as you're, staying consistent and whatever that means for you but as there's some sort of consistency and then checking in with what's happening there when you're feeling less than blissful in your business then yeah that's a good simplicity check-in yeah <laughs> good. 
So what uh, that now we're on to the last one, right? Yes, the last mm -hmm. E, the last letter is E, and that stands for your energetic blueprint. Mm. So again, um, basically they all kind of like tie in together, mm -hmm. but basically it's just having awareness of your own ener energetic blueprint. Um, so yeah, as I was sharing, I'm doing the human human design stuff. So that is a great way to look at, um, yeah, how am I supposed to show up? So, but also too, you can take your own inventory of what triggers feelings of overwhelm. Let's explore that with curiosity. Where, um, like for instance, what's really been cool for me too with human design is how am I making decisions? So if you do check out your chart, a really quick little tip on that, what I've been learning is you'll see what your energy type is and also what is your authority. So I'll show what your authority. Um, if your authority is emotional, it's just being aware of, I really feel emotions. I, I, I am not an emotional authority, even though I'm an emotional person, it just means I really pick up on other people's emotions. So mm -hmm. this has been kind of like blowing my mind. But if you are an emotional authority, if you if you take if you plunk in your information and see, oh, emotional authority, it's just paying attention to the patterns of emotions that come up for you. So maybe even taking uh, an emotional journal like every day, just you know, because mm -hmm. if you're emotional authority, you'll see that, oh, interesting. I'm like up here for like a week and then for three days there's just a little bit of a crash but at mm -hmm. least you see there's like oh there's a pattern here just being aware though if you are emotional authority is that you're not making your decisions when things are really like rocking and rolling but if you're a sacral uh, authority like myself then i need to go with what lights me up and it's a little primal but just checking in if it's a yes or no mm -hmm. so noticing if you are sacral, if you can surround yourself with yes or no, this or that type questions, and then just go with that, ooh, that lights me up, or ugh, like kind of like the corn on the cob thing, right? <laughs> it's like yes to the corn, no to the, I can't remember what turned me off food-wise. I was I would eat all the food. It was more like for me, the stuff that turned me off. Like I didn't want too much stuff around me, like plasticky things. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. When I was pregnant, I, the first time I was really concerned that I would crave pickles and ice cream because that's like the standard and yeah. I hate pickles. I don't even <gasps> like them like on my plate. Like I just, they gross me out. Um, but I didn't, I craved waffles. <laughs> oh, <laughs> lots of waffles. Ooh, yeah. interesting. Okay. I'm going to meditate on what's in waffles. <laughs> who knows i think what's in waffles <laughs> yeah i don't i don't know um i know growing up i ate a lot of aunt jemima waffles and i'm mm. weird i like it with butter on one side and strawberry jelly on the like not <gasps> so if it's oh, flat yeah 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 you know, half is uh -huh. butter half is jelly and i i have to do two <laughs> wow i start with the strawberry on one and then oh finish God, with so the cute. strawberry on the end what there's a, a weirdism of nicole there you go <laughs> Well, it's not as weird as what I thought you meant at first. I thought you meant like butter on. on. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, ooh, that could get <laughs> tricky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, really quick, um, if you notice you're a splenic authority, that you should go more with your intuition. You are gifted mm -hmm. with a really strong intuition. So just listen to those little like inside voices that are guiding you. Yeah, I've little been hits. hearing about the human design and I, I didn't, I, I had no clue what it was about to be honest with you. So um, I'm glad you kind of explained that a little yeah, bit. And uh, so for anybody fun. who is curious, you know, I will have the show notes, the link that you mentioned earlier. I'll put that yeah, in there as well. Too. Absolutely. Yeah. So how do you know when to, when you need to use the safe word? When actually really quickly related to human design, if you look on your chart, your chart, if you go to that website, there'll be an area where it says not self theme. And then I'll have like an emotional, if you are like my, my type, it says frustration. So mm -hmm. that when I'm feeling frustrated, it means I'm out of alignment with how I'm meant to show up. The same could be held true for you when it's time to yell out your safe word, if you're feeling frustrated, whatever the opposite of your word of the year, you can even, if you choose a word of the year, it's like, what's the opposite of fun, like boredom. If you're feeling bored, right? 
um, for my word of the year, fun fact for 2022, it's emotions. So I was inspired by a Stacey Bateman podcast recently where she spoke to this. She's like, try this one on. I'm like, ooh, I'm intrigued. So for me, maybe it could be like feelings of detachment, like pushing, like I feel like I'm pushing things away or I feel like kind of stifled, like on the brink of tears or just anyways. Yeah. So yeah, you know it when, um, yeah, it's the opposite of whatever mama bliss means to you so what i meant mama bliss when i first was mama bliss is the um absence of me at my less savory mothering moments when my kids were little so that was for me losing my patience mm -hmm. which could translate as feeling frustrated yeah. and for me it always kind of um presented when we were late for things like I signed up Edie for like Suzuki method less like music classes when she was so young leaving that was our first lesson and I it was not pretty like I hope my neighbors didn't have security cameras <laughs> so I was just like ah, all, yeah, we all yeah have those it's just moments. like yeah and I'm like yeah. there's too much on my plate safe word what's yeah. the stuff what are the activities how can I go more with the flow and how can I honor the way I am meant to energetically. So that's just an example of, you know, yeah. um, how you can know when you need to check in with where you're to at. To me, it sounds like, uh, like, and I know I do this for myself is like, it fits a negative kind of feeling. Yeah. Like a negative umbrella. I'm like, oh, I don't know if that's the right thing to do, but you got to, I think, distinguish between is that fear of like mm -hmm. moving forward or is it like, what is, what is the root feeling yeah. that it's coming from? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things that you do is, which we talked about, are train moms how to coach mm -hmm. inside your Mama Bliss coaching school. And you offer yeah. a 12-week certification program for moms yes. who want to start offering one-on-one -on -one coaching services. Yeah. And you have a special offer for all the Shape It Up followers today. Do you want to share that? Uh, yeah, sure. If you head over to blissbeyondnaptime.com forward slash 5050. Five zero. Um, there you'll find a PDF that has 50 coaching niche ideas if you want to work with moms one on one. And there's also a mini training in there on how to tap into your own inner knowing on which niche to serve based on, you know, your human design, your own biography, and just trusting that all those little bliss crumbs that you've been following through your life have led you to this moment if you're exploring working with moms one on one, and to just trust the next step. Yeah, yeah. so if you are an entrepreneur out there listening, or maybe you're working in a business and you want to become an entrepreneur, go check out her site. Um, I will leave all the links in the show notes so you can check it out there. All right, we're going to the speed round. Eee! I don't know why I always All find right. these so scary, but okay, I'll just have fun. Twenty twenty one word. I can't ask you coffee or tea because we know what that is. It's a given. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we all have some unique job in our past that mm -hmm. was questionable. We'll keep it G-rated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was the unique job you had? I don't know if it was risky. It doesn't. But have to be. it was super fun. Uh, right out of university, uh, I took communication studies. Uh, I worked in advertising and I worked for three years in an advertising agency. It was me and two other guys and they were crazy and they had me do crazy stuff. Um, so I did everything in there. I wrote copy. Um, we did a bunch of things like we wrote on hold commercials and we did marketing for medical doctors uh, such as hair transplant doctors. So in Calgary, where I worked, we have the stampede, the Calgary stampede, um, where in July, it's like 10 days of rodeos. And downtown Calgary, there's free pancake breakfast at every downtown office out in parking lots. So I had to go to these pancake breakfasts and talk up cute bald guys and ask them if they wanted to be a model for a before and after hair transplant ad so that they're faces could be on billboards across the city. Oh, fun, fun. So did they actually try the product? 
just it was so people. weird just took a photo <laughs> for before and it was so silly it was like big billboards oh, hair so today funny. gone tomorrow or gone today hair tomorrow <laughs> or something like crazy like that yeah it was such a fun job though i did everything uh well if you're one of the men randomly that are listening yeah. and did that i want to know <laughs> you're not flattered <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. What is your favorite inspirational quote? It never hurts to try because um, my daughter, I don't know, a few years ago, she had to do, you know, for one of her classes in school, career exploration or something. Mm -hmm. She showed me um, her assignment. It was all these like, like questions kind of like that you're asking. And they asked, what's your favorite quote and by who? And she wrote down, it never hurts to try. And then the source, mama. <laughs> That's great that she quoted I you. <laughs> like, oh, I'm her favorite. I'm her Oprah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the last question. Did you have a favorite toy growing up and what was it? Oh, yes, I did. My Easy Bake Oven. <laughs> And I you know this, cooking. but when I was about five years old, four or five, we're having breakfast and I lived, I grew up in Montreal and all of a sudden there was like a hurricane and we're eating breakfast and the roof flew off of our house. Oh my gosh. And we had to like run out the front door. My dad had to like push the front door and it flew off. I don't know if that's my childish recollection but it was kind of like wizard of oz it just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we had to run across the street to our neighbors and my older brother who's five years older than me we're running and he goes my goldfish and then it triggered in me kind of like oh yeah what's my favorite thing in the house and i went my easy bake oven <laughs> that's how i'll always remember that that was my apparently my favorite toy growing up wow that's a little traumatic though <laughs> Oh my gosh. That's why we live where we do now. Nelson, mm. there's a ton of snow, but there's not much wind. But when uh -huh. the wind picks up here and all my friends know, they know that if it's windy here, they, they all check on me. How are you doing? Cause they know it, it, yeah, triggers, it triggers my anxiety for yeah. sure. Um, I don't know how many years ago. So where I live right now, um, this past, I guess it was the fall. There was a, a hurricane that came, <gasps> I'm sorry, so not a hurricane, a tornado came through oh, and wiped out a bunch of houses not too far from here but a, quite a few years ago i want to say four years ago thank goodness my husband's a really light sleeper he woke up in the middle of the night at 2 a.m in the morning and he's like he says he was like i kept hearing this like car like it sounded like a truck coming by and he's like it, like his version is, is he kept hearing it but didn't see lights or anything like that so he gets up and um he wakes me up and and it sounded like a train coming through Jesus. like our yard yeah and it blew past our yard and right outside of our house picked now I live out in the country too but like picked up this huge tree of our neighbors and like slammed it in the middle like roots and everything oh this huge tree and threw it in the gosh. middle of the road um the roads were shut down for I don't know how many weeks but um oh, yeah so my kids nature. Wow. yeah my kids would be very like anytime there's a storm even today now that they're older my kids are almost 17 and 15 um but like my daughter, she would, you know, grab all her toys and like line them up. So in case we had to go in the basement and oh my but, goodness, yeah. And, you know, yeah. and I don't remember cause I grew up not too far from where I live now. Um, I don't remember storms like this. I don't remember tornadoes hitting us and hmm. I'm in New Jersey. I mean, you know, tornadoes that's like mid <laughs> middle of the United States. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, we don't do tornadoes here. Otherwise I wouldn't be living here. <laughs> <laughs> like in a cave somewhere <laughs> yeah I don't know I mean it's like anywhere you live I'm sure there's, there's gonna be some exactly there's gonna be something yep. you know I'd love to live in California but the fires and the yep. earthquakes we got fires here a little for sure. yeah 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 and snowstorms some of the anyways yeah yeah we just got some snow ourselves here so but you probably get a lot of snow don't you you know we do we oh my gosh crazy amount of snow um but it's mild. It doesn't get too cold here. So I'll take really? it. Now I don't, what's I don't... not too cold. Now are you in Celsius? Cause I'll, I might need to do some math. Okay. Yeah. I'm Celsius. <laughs> um, I grew up in Calgary, uh, Montreal. And then mm -hmm. we moved to Calgary where Craig and I met. Um, that is cold Montreal and Calgary where winters, it would hit 
minus 30. Oh, minus Celsius? Celsius. That's really, really That's cold. Really cold. Really, really cold. We moved here and only gets to like minus eight at on a really cold okay. day. So like and I 20... have gotten soft. Now I'm all like, oh, it's so cold out. But really, it's not that bad at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Minus four these days, which is like so nice. Yeah, I think um, the other day I was looking, it was at nighttime and I was looking at the weather channel and it said it felt like eight degrees outside, which mm. for us, that would, for you, that would be like 22. Oh, you're Celsius, good at like conversions. That. Yeah, I know it's about like 10-ish less than, okay, because 32 is freezing, it's... I believe. <laughs> yeah, zero <laughs> is freezing for us. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So very cool. All right. So let's wrap this up. Any one takeaway that you want to leave with everybody listening? It never hurts to try. <laughs> <laughs> Deep thoughts. <laughs> Deep thoughts by Kathy. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, Kathy, thank you so much for being on the show today. Um, and again, everybody, if you want more information, I will leave all the show links in the not the show links, the links in the show notes. <laughs> so thank you all for being here and watching and listening. And uh, I'll be back next Tuesday for the next Shape It Up Over 40 podcast, video, whatever you want to call it. Have a beautiful week and I'll talk to you soon.